Hey, what is up, YouTube? My name is Mr. Kyle Cohen. I'm a fourth grade teacher in Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is the time of year where aspiring teachers are looking for jobs, applying for jobs, all things jobs. And I have filmed a few videos here on my YouTube channel about how to set yourself up for success when it comes to applying for teaching positions. I have filmed a few videos about interviews, interview tips and tricks, those sorts of things. I've also filmed videos about internships and student teaching, all of that. I will go ahead and link those videos down below. But today I wanted to specifically answer any questions that you have. So I asked over on Instagram, what teaching related questions you have for anyone who is an aspiring teacher. You are entering the field of education at an incredibly challenging time. It goes without saying that our students and teachers and communities are going through more now than they probably ever have before when it comes to the pandemic, when it comes to the national labor shortage that's impacting our ability to get substitute teachers in schools, when it comes to our students' social, emotional, and learning needs needs as a result of the pandemic. Know that if you are someone who is considering entering the field of education that yes, it is going to be challenging. However, our work has always been challenging. Our work before the pandemic was challenging. I would reframe your thinking. I would shift your mindset to you're entering the field of education at a time where your leadership is needed most. Our students your future students need you so badly to show up for them and deliver a high quality education. And I would be so excited to be entering the field right now. There's so much negativity and so much pessimism on social media when it comes to people leaving education, when it comes to folks who are burnt out from all that we have experienced. And that is real. Know that you are really going to have a transformative impact right now when your students truly need you. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into your questions. Deaf talk about work-life balance, so challenging for new teachers, so challenging for new teachers, and so challenging for teachers in their fourth year of teaching, and so challenging for veteran teachers. Teaching and the field of education, for so many people, including myself, it's a calling, and it doesn't really stop, right? Like, when you leave work at the end of the school day, you're not really done. It's never ending. And there are people who subscribe to the idea of, I'm going to work my contract hours. I'm going to work the 40 hour work week. I am going to set these boundaries. And I think that's really great advice if you are someone who is really struggling with finding balance. I also think that's really great advice for someone who is feeling a little burnt out with their work in the classroom. But for someone like me who is entering the field of education, when I was getting started, I didn't have a work-life balance and I didn't really care. And at the end of the day, I don't know if that's good advice and I don't know if that is really sustainable, but it worked for me and it's really gotten me to where I am today in my career. So if you are someone who is so excited about going above and beyond for your students, you're gonna pour everything into your classroom, I say do it, just go for it. And the second it starts to not feel good, the second it starts to impact your own physical or mental health, pull back. You will go through seasons, you will go through seasons of wanting to work all the time. You will go through seasons of, I'm going to set up these boundaries. There are plenty of people here on social media who have given tons of advice for when it comes to how to create these boundaries. I think it's also important to acknowledge that there are plenty of people who love their work and don't see it as work and actually get so much joy and fulfillment out of being a teacher. And if that is you, work on the weekends, work in the evenings, do it until it doesn't feel good. And if it continues to feel good and continues to feel right, Keep it up. At the end of the day, there's so much we can be doing to continuing to push the needle forward for kids. There's a never ending supply of tasks that can be completed. You'll figure it out. I just know it. How do I not feel discouraged about going into teaching with what teachers are going through right now? It's really hard and I can imagine seeing things on TikTok and on Instagram where teachers are so tired, teachers are so burnt out. I have seen so many videos with teachers who are actually leaving the profession and I'm sure you're asking yourself, is this for me? Is education cut out for me? And I think these are really healthy and important things to be asking yourself. I believe that someone who is entering the field of education should be critically considering their role in our greater education system. You should have a very clear why. Why are you going into this field? 
Why are you doing this? Because you're certainly not doing it for the money. You're certainly not doing it for the fame. You are certainly not doing it because you're going to get a whole bunch of appreciation and gratitude and thanks. Like, that is not why folks enter the field of education. And if you are someone who needs any of that, again, I would look in the mirror and I would ask yourself why. For me personally, I deeply believe that we live in a country that has so much work to do in terms of ensuring that every single kid has a high quality education. It is the unfortunate reality that we live in a country where kids in one zip code have a dramatically different educational experience than kids who live in another, and I believe that is an injustice, I believe that is inequitable, and I am in this field to ensure that I am doing everything I possibly can to push back on these systemic inequities so that all kids in our country can have an equitable education. That is my why. It's clear. I've thought it through. It is part of who I am. It is why I continue to show up in the way I do for kids each and every day. It's why I've made a commitment to studying educational leadership. By having a clear-cut why and by really understanding what I am doing here, it has made the pandemic more manageable. Again, it's been challenging. But it has made it more manageable, it has made the national labor shortage more manageable, it has made the massive gaps that my students have in their education more manageable because I have that clear why. And without it, you can quickly lose sight of what made you enter this field to begin with. So any of you aspiring teachers out there, get really crystal clear in what that why is and get ready to face some pretty big challenges. This work is not easy, this work will never be easy, but my hope is that you did not choose to enter education because you were looking for a simple clock in, clock out, nine to five, easy job, what, whatever that even is. Looking back on your first year of teaching, what advice would you give yourself? Looking back on my first year of teaching, I would tell myself, to not take everything so seriously. I think it's important that you give yourself some grace because as a first-year teacher, there are very few things that go perfectly. And as someone who now has some teaching experience under their belt, there are very few things that ever go according to plan. I never really considered myself a flexible person person. I never really considered myself like someone who was extremely adaptable, but my first and second year of teaching formed my ability to become someone who is flexible, to become someone who is adaptable. I was a very type A regimented routine person. I had plans in place for how my school day would go during my first year, and I would get really upset if something didn't go according to plan, if a student had a behavior that did not allow the lesson to go the way I was hoping it would go, if we had a school cancellation or a fire drill or something happened in the middle of the day that would throw off my schedule, that would actually really upset me. It would like, I would feel stress in my body because of that. I would also schedule everything. I would say, okay, on this day after school, I'm planning. On this day after school, I'm grading. On this day after school, I'm organizing my classroom library. On this, and I had to give that up. I could not function with such strict deadlines for myself. There are plenty of school days where at four o'clock I'm done and I, I'm not ready to work. I don't wanna work, I, I, I need a break. I needed to form the flexibility and ability to be okay with that. I think it's really important that teachers are flexible, that teachers are adaptable because there's so much that is not in our control, especially given the current situations that we are working with. So I think that it's just really key that you're not being too hard on yourself and that you're not putting too many restrictions and schedules and plans in place. There's there's only so much you can control. And if I can go back in time, I would just look at first year teacher Kyle and say, chill out, it's gonna be fine. Details for a successful first week of school about routines and relationships. I absolutely love this question. I love the first day of school. The first day of school for me is like summer camp and I am a huge summer camp person. I worked at camp my entire life. I attended camp my entire life and I build the first week of school just like summer camp because for me, in my mind, it is all about relationships. It is so intentional. It is so important for me to ensure that every single 
single student in my classroom has an incredible week that they feel welcome, they feel included, they feel safe, they feel valued. I want to build that culture from day one, from the moment they step foot in the classroom. So I am constantly doing activities and games and all sorts of team building. We talk a lot about expectations, we talk a lot about routines, we talk a lot about fun, we talk a lot about one another, and it is such an incredible week. I will go ahead and link my videos down below from the 2021 and 2020, 2021 and 2020, first days of school. I actually have both of them here filmed on YouTube, so I go into a lot of detail about, like, specifically what the day looks like, but in general, for me, it's important that kids leave after the first day and first week of school feeling really excited about the year to come. Any ways to teach the prohibited topics? I'm assuming you're talking about social emotional learning, critical race theory, those sorts of topics that have now become prohibited. And let's be clear, we were never teaching critical race theory to fourth graders. At least I was never teaching my fourth graders about critical race theory. And I am also not teaching my students social emotional learning. I, I don't understand what these buzzwords are. Here's what I am teaching my fourth graders. Teaching my fourth graders about empathy. I'm teaching them about integrity. I'm teaching them about diversity. I'm teaching them about inclusion. I'm teaching them about how to be kind. We are team building. We are building culture. And through all of those things, we're having real conversations. We just finished the book Front Desk. Front Desk is about a fifth grade or fourth grade girl who immigrated to the United States of America. We talked through reading that book about immigration. We talked through reading that book about inequities with poverty and money in this country. We talked about through reading that book what it looks like to be different. We talked about through reading that book the role that race plays in our world, in our country, in our schools. I do not force my students to think one way over the other. I present real world problems. I present real world topics. We have conversations. I don't share my opinion. We live in a world where there are currently prohibited topics in our education system. I personally believe that I have a duty to educate my students about what it means to grow into a leader, what it means to be a person who views other people as human beings. And we have real conversations about it. We ask questions. We talk. And we constantly reflect on the type of leaders we want to be and how we want to show up for one another, not just in our classroom, but in our world. I'm going to end with this one. College student here. Is it worth even going to the field at this point? Yes. I mentioned this at the start of the video. I will say it again. Your future students, they need you. They need you now more than ever. There are tons of people who are choosing to leave the field of education right now. Whether it's they don't get fulfillment out of their work anymore, they're burnt out, they're exhausted, they're tired of the current status quo, they're tired of the overwhelming inequities in our system, and they're just done. And I think the fact that they're leaving is okay. We need folks in classrooms who are ready to fight for kids. We need folks in classrooms, in schools, in positions of leadership in this country who are ready to create system-wide change. What's currently going on isn't working. And we should not be working to get back to how things were in 2019 because things weren't working then either. But now is our chance to reimagine school. Now is our chance to redefine what public education systems look like here in the United States. And if you are ready to be part of that change, if you are excited about making an impact, about making meaningful relationships with kids, their families, and communities, you're in this work for the right reasons, you should be excited about stepping foot into a classroom, especially if you've waited so long for this moment, a lot needs to change, and you're gonna get to be part of that change. And I hope that, that idea, I hope that gets you excited.
just got me excited. Like, I'm feeling pumped right now. I'm ready to go to work on Monday. But I, I so appreciate you being here. I so appreciate you watching. I've been posting a lot on TikTok lately. So if you are someone who is not on TikTok, I highly recommend downloading the app. Give me a follow. I've been posting there pretty regularly throughout the week. I will always continue to post videos here on YouTube because YouTube, you are my number one. Again, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you watching. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.